Hey folks, Flo here at the CBC Summit in Toronto. I'm here with George Bordiano, founder and CEO of Balance. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what Balance actually does? Awesome stuff. Well, good to see you, first of all, it's and thank pleasure. you for, for having me here. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Balance. We're uh, Canada's oldest and probably Canada's largest digital asset custodian, currently holding roughly one and a half billion worth of assets. We've been around since 2017. Uh, at the core of it, we're a secure storage and transfer solution for digital commodities. And we've been slowly building towards uh, getting what's called qualified custodian status, which would allow us to serve some of these platforms, such as the trading platforms, the stable coin issues that are now getting regulated, and uh, more broadly being able to custody fiat and securities as well. And I, I know you're an expert in, in, in crypto custody, so I have to ask you and put you on the spot a little bit. Can you give us your 30 seconds definition of crypto custody? What is it and why does it matter? When it comes to securing large amount of uh, assets, uh, past a certain point, it makes more sense to give possession of those assets to someone that manages the safety and the security aspect of it as a dedicated business. We've built our proprietary stack from the ground up over the last seven years. And with a very high degree of confidence, I can uh, pretty much tell you that what, what we offer is significantly stronger and more secure than someone holding, say, a ledger device and doing self-custody, or even using a multi-sig with a couple of partners where some credentials are maybe split across a couple of safety deposit boxes. Particularly when you're dealing with institutions, regulated businesses, very large amount of assets, uh, you want a solution that has in place all the necessary backup, disaster recovery, and succession planning protocols in place. So you know that even if there's any sort of attempt at a malicious collusion or, or, or attack at the custodian side, the assets will still be protected. I know it sounds uh, pretty boring and not as exciting as other businesses in the space, but it is a core component of the space and without the ability to keep these assets safe, there isn't much that we can do and, and build on top of it. Right. So it is a foundational layer for the ecosystem. Very, very clear. I appreciate it a lot. So uh, I have to read my notes here because it's a bit long, but Balance recently filed an application with the Alberta Treasury Board uh, and Finance. Uh, can you elaborate a bit on the filing? What are you filing for and what maybe a little bit on the timeline and, and what the impact will be on Balance and on the space? To segue a bit from the previous answer, as a custodian, we take exclusive possession over the assets by generating and managing private key material. The asset ownership, the full legal registered and beneficial title sits with the client. Control also sits with the client through the form of a custody agreement. Now, uh, typically this kind of arrangement, which is a bailment arrangement, doesn't require anything more than this to be executed out in the market, which is how we've been operating successfully so for the last seven years. Now, when you're dealing with a large regulated entity, such as a broker dealer or an investment advisor or a public fund, they have regulatory requirements from their own regulators, and usually we're, we're talking within the Canadian context of the Canadian Securities Administrators, to use a custodian for what's called, uh, which meets the, what's, what's called qualified custodian status. Okay. Now that qualified custodian status, there are a couple of ways to achieve it. A broker dealer, for example, could uh, be deemed a qualified custodian under National Instrument 31103. A bank or a trust or an affiliate could be deemed a qualified custodian. The route that we're pursuing is getting a trust charter what's called a special purpose trust charter incorporated in Alberta with Alberta's Treasury Board and Finance. And then we also have a net equity requirement of 10 million that we need to meet on top in order to get that qualified status. So it's a very uh, you know, roundabout way of saying custody has traditionally been done by banks and trusts. You don't need a trust charter to do crypto custody of commodities. But having that trust charter allows us to meet the criteria which would enable us to serve the regulated market, which is currently very much so underserved. Most of the registered CTPs in Canada are still to this day go, going over to Coinbase, Gemini and Bitgo over in the United States. And then more broadly, for us as a custodian, having the trust charter in place would enable us to hold custody of not just what are digital commodities, your typical Bitcoin, Ethereum and say Litecoin, but also crypto securities. And we're talking from security tokens to liquid staking derivatives to any sort of private equity issued on the blockchain. And also fiat, which does help streamline the workflows, the operational workflows of a lot of the client base. So um, our filing with the ATBF is a very big step towards achieving that qualified status. With a little bit of luck, uh, you know, like if we get it approved at some point, let's say mid next year, I don't have a crystal ball and it does depend on, uh, you know, at the end of the day when the regulators deem us to be fit to operate a trust charter. 
um, we we hope to make, to put the necessary regulatory capital in place at the same time. So at the trust charter registration step, we'll also be a qualified custodian at the gate, and then we'll have at least one more local solution to serve these businesses. Okay. Wow, that that was a mouthful, but you again explained it extremely well. Uh, and you don't have a crystal ball, of course, no one does. But we are almost in 2024, and so I have to ask you, what is your surest prediction for the year to come? The Bitcoin, uh, the, sorry, the Bitcoin having will happen. Now nah, yeah. you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> What's your other prediction? That one's mathematical and is baked into the protocol. Um, I am seeing the, the the ecosystem fundamentally get a bit of an uplift, and even in the last couple of weeks to months. Part of it is driven by the positive market movements, like Bitcoin is now over 35,000 years, so that obviously helps. It helps with attracting investors into the space, it helps with attracting talent, it helps with attracting entrepreneurs to start their businesses. But I'm also seeing uh, a lot of clarity, and not necessarily just on regula regulatory requirements that might apply to some businesses, but also, for example, on the accounting standards. Like both the IESB and the uh, uh, financial uh, uh, like the administrators of both the GAAP accounting regime and the, uh, uh, the IFRS accounting regime, let's put it that way, are both releasing clear accounting guidelines that will be coming out to the market in early next year. So we're talking Q1 next year. Once we have a clear way of accounting for these assets, so we know their exact tax treatment, we know the accounting treatment, we know what to do with them when they're getting staked, we know what to do with them when they're getting delegated, we know what to do with them when there's a disposition happening of any sorts, then you'll, we, I hope to see, and I expect to see, a significant uh, uh, you know, drive for traditional asset managers to get into the space. If, uh, you know, like if your CFO knows what to do with it, then there's definitely conversation we had about building a structured investment product. Whereas if your CFO doesn't know how to account and how to treat it, that conversation becomes a lot more complicated. And this is what we have to deal with, unfortunately, for the last couple of years when we're discussing institutional adoption. Clear accounting standards will take the, the space to the next stage of adoption. Very clear again and, and, and very encouraging, of course. Thank you very much. Thank you so much as well.